Well, hello everybody. How's it going this fine afternoon? Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. So I want to hop right in this uh, simply because uh, I've been ministering a message uh, on surprise visits. And of course, uh, at the first of the year, uh, you know, as we were all seeking the Lord. Of course, God was giving me stuff. I was putting in my journal. And one of the things, and I mentioned this over the month of January, one of the uh, things the Lord spoke to me was about surprise visits, that God was going to surprise his people with visitation and encounter. And uh, when he came down to do so, uh, you know, just go with that flow. Amen. If it's a church service, you know, just kick your uh, itinerary to the side or maybe your daily schedule and just receive from the Lord, hear his voice and flow with him. Amen. And he may surprise you with a blessing. He may show up and just lift the burden, destroy the yoke. And again, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago after Kim Walker, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, I put in her, uh, one of her new CDs that I bought. And by the second song, the Holy Spirit just came down and just wrecked me. I mean, completely wrecked me for a while. And uh, just completely just boom, just uh, changed the whole atmosphere and changed me. And uh, of course, he's done that over the years. I've mentioned in the last two, part one and two, about the Lord just showing up for my grandmother and just others. He showed up for Abraham, hallelujah, in Genesis 12, 15, and 18. I just read 18 this week, and he shows up with the three uh, uh, three angels or whatever. And uh, Abraham said, don't pass me by. And he made it, made them something to eat. And then, of course, a little bit later, the Lord brought the word that by that time, the next year, Sarah was going to be pregnant with the promise. Hallelujah. And uh, they were to call him Isaac, which means joy. And it was going to be great joy as God showed up with surprise visits. So today, and of course, I wanted the first, first one I talked to you about the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on the mount. Hello, his clothes was transfigured, the, the whitest anybody could ever bleach him in the world. Hallelujah, he's talking to Moses and Elijah. Amen, a cloud comes down, and uh, uh, the voice says, the father said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased to listen to him. So when God comes with a surprise visit, amen, we need to listen to what he's saying, amen. And again, it's not just for us, as we found out, because they went down into a demon-possessed valley while Peter wanted to make shelters. That's what we want to do. We, God comes down, we just want to make shelters and stay there, but it's for a reason and a purpose. And they went down and Jesus set a demon-possessed boy free. So when God shows up, Amen, is to hear him, and there's a purpose. Number two, we talked about in uh, John 20, when the disciples were hiding in fear from the Jews, Jesus showed up, he spoke peace, he, he uh, gave them purpose. He says, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you, and he breathed on them, and they received power. So uh, when he cut, showed up surprisingly, amen, he gave them peace, he gave them purpose and power. So number three, uh, Jesus speaks to them in Acts 1, 4, 5, and 8, and he says, don't leave Jerusalem. I thought about this week. This week, He said, uh, so they went and they waited and they received the power of God. Jesus said, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you're gonna be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen, he said to Luke 24, 49, they would be clothed with power just like he had been telling them. So they had no idea how uh, this promise was going to be. Uh, but amen, he said that you were going to receive power, Acts 1.8. And they would be witnesses. So there was a purpose in the power. Can I get an amen? And so they're, they're in there. They're praying. They got together with all the men, the women. They're praying for 10 days. They're worshiping. They're praying. There probably some of them. Well, uh, some of them did leave because there were five hundred that heard heard uh, Jesus uh, say what he said before he ascended to heaven. But on that day, there were hundred and twenty faithful souls 
who said, I don't understand it, but I'm waiting. I'm worshiping and praying. I'm going to receive something. Say, I'm going to receive something. So here's what happened. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there was a surprise visit. Bam! There came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began, everybody say began. They began to speak with other tongues and languages. And as, as, as he rested on them, and the Spirit gave them this utterance, amen, and they were speaking it out, hallelujah. And people came running to the sound, hallelujah. And they said, hey, man, what's going on? These people are Galileans. And look at what verse 11 says. It says, we hear them in our own tongues and languages speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they continued in amazement and great perplexity. Then they said to one another, what does this mean? Some said they're drunk, but Peter stands up with the 11, says, no, 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 no. These men aren't drunk as you suppose. This is, this is the fulfillment of what was spoken in Joel 2, 28 through 32, that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, even on my men servants and maid servants. I will, if I say I will, pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. He goes on to talk about signs uh, in the earth. And then he says, and everyone, everybody say everyone, who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So my friends, as we stay connected to the Lord, as we spend time in his presence, just when we need him, there will be a surprise visit from heaven, a supernatural occurrence, a supernatural breakthrough, a supernatural blessing, a supernatural deliverance, supernatural power to come upon us and transform us into a mighty witness. Can I get an amen? There's a reason, shout, there's a reason for the power. Hallelujah. There's a reason he shows up. He showed up and said, listen to my son. With him, I'm well pleased. He showed up and gave them peace, purpose, and power. And on this occasion, on part three of this surprise visit series, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost shows up. Jesus took of the Spirit and poured it out. And guess what? He's still pouring it out today on every hungry, thirsty heart. Can I get an amen? So lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, I'm thirsty. Lord, show up. Lord, show out. Hallelujah. And come upon me in great power and great glory. Hallelujah. So I can be a witness to this generation. And Peter preached the gospel that day. Peter, who had failed God, called curses down on himself. Said, I don't even know the man. Hallelujah. Filled with this power. This suddenly, hallelujah, he preached and 3,000 were saved. Hallelujah. The church was built and went into all the world. My friends, hallelujah, receive his presence today. And Lord, I praise you and thank you that just when we need it, Lord, you always show up. You showed up for Abram. You showed up for Abraham and Sarah. You showed up for David. You showed up for Joshua. You showed up for the disciples on the day of Pentecost. And Lord, you will show up for us too. Lord, this year come and bring surprise visits. And we thank you that it'll be just exactly what we need so we can move forward in 2021. Can I get an amen? Well, folks, I'm out. Thank you for tuning in to Life Nuggets, the Surprise Visit Series, Part 3. Shalom.